The Net Zero Energy Ready Challenge is a Clean BC incentive program and juried competition for large buildings launched in 2018. It provides financial support for developments targeting net zero energy ready levels of performance and aims to celebrate, promote, and learn from BC's most innovative and energy efficient projects. Integral Group and Vancouver's Zero Emissions Building Exchange have commissioned a series of six technical playbooks and accompanying videos to help our development, design, and construction communities make net zero energy ready buildings a reality before they are required throughout the province in 2032. This playbook video, developed by Morrison Hirschfield and Zebex, is about thermal bridging in net zero energy ready buildings. My name is Neil Norris, a Facade Thermal Performance Specialist with Morrison Hirschfield Limited. And I'll be taking you through how to understand and approach mitigating thermal bridging during the design of net zero buildings. To begin, let's look at how the building envelope impacts our net zero ready targets. One of the primary net zero metrics is the thermal energy demand intensity, or TEDI which is a measure of the heating energy needed to maintain comfortable interior conditions. Achieving a low TEDI value in design includes having efficient building massing, having heat recovery ventilation, airtight construction, optimized high performance glazing systems, highly insulated assemblies, and mitigated thermal bridging. When it comes to the opaque envelope specifically, the TEDI can be significantly impacted by the thermal performance and thermal bridging through the assemblies. Thermal bridging occurs when structural framing and other conductive components bypass the insulation, increasing heat flow through the building envelope. This occurs in our clear field assemblies, such as wall, floor, and roof systems, from repetitive thermal bridging like studs, fasteners, and cladding attachments. However, thermal bridging also occurs at intersections of building envelope elements at interface details. These interrupt the uniformity of the clear field. This would include details such as intermediate floors, roof to wall, window to wall, corners, and at-grade interfaces. The purpose of this video is not to go over specifically how to conduct thermal bridging calculations and assumes you already know how. If you need more information on thermal bridging calculations, please see the online version of the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide at www.thermalenvelope.ca. There, you can find additional instructional videos, examples, and further calculation guidance. So why does thermal bridging matter? In terms of net zero buildings, it will impact energy consumption for space heating, HVAC design, condensation control, comfort, and construction materials. From a code perspective, many codes and standards, whether they be net zero or not, may require comprehensive thermal bridging calculations. In understanding the importance of thermal bridging, we have to acknowledge that thermal bridging cannot truly be eliminated, only mitigated. And finally, we also need to understand that the impact of thermal bridging from interface details becomes much more significant as we aim for higher and higher thermal performance from our building envelopes. For net zero ready buildings, if we're unable to significantly minimize thermal bridging, then additional measures will likely be needed to make up for it and reduce the TEDI values. This could result in limitations to architectural features, very efficient HRVs, low window to wall ratios, heavy reliance on getting very airtight building envelopes, extremely high glazing performance, all of which could have implications on cost, constructability, and architectural intent. And in some cases, even these may not be enough to overcome the impact of thermal bridging to meet our TEDI targets. What should we target then? We know we cannot eliminate thermal bridging. However, if we characterize the overall heat flow through the envelope, we should aim to have about 30% or less of that heat flow caused by interface details, and about 70% or more directly from the clearfield assemblies. This may not always be possible depending on the construction type or building type, but it's a starting point. And this should always be looked at holistically, as this will potentially impact other improvements in the design. Now, let's go through the process of addressing thermal bridging during design. To even begin developing the level of insulation and thermal bridge mitigation in the building envelope assemblies, we first need to know what U value or effective R value it will need to meet. During pre-design, the initial targets for the envelope will need to be established. This could be done via a preliminary energy model or using a pre-screening tool such as Building Pathfinder. At this stage, very little design information may be present, 
So a very general estimation for the clear field performance can be made based on an allowance for the contribution of thermal bridging. We are aiming for 30%. But in an early stage, we may choose to go as high as 50% to allow for further flexibility as the design is refined during design development. The first target for the clear field performance will help establish the direction of the development of the wall and roof and floor assemblies and the amount of insulation that may be needed. As the design is further developed and details are created, then more detailed calculations for the envelope will be needed. To do that, the first steps are to identify all the sources of heat flow including all the clear field assemblies and linear and point interface details. Then you need to provide performance values for these details, which could come from sources like the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide. Then you perform the quantity takeoffs for these sources. Finally, you need to multiply the transmittances by the corresponding quantities to determine the individual heat flow contributions. These can then be added up to determine the overall opaque envelope transmittance. From there, it becomes an iterative process. After performing the calculations, you can see which details have the biggest impact. These high impact details can be focused on for refinement and improvement. These refinements will need to consider other factors, including impacts on cost, constructability, and comfort. If the revisions are acceptable and incorporated into the design, then other assumptions can also be reevaluated including the amount of insulation and the thicknesses in your assemblies. This process can be repeated again and again till the overall envelope R value targets are met. So what will likely be those high impact details? The number one on the list are window to wall interfaces. On net zero buildings, especially multi-unit residential buildings, designs will push for lower window to wall ratios and more punch window arrangements. While not intuitive, this detail can have the largest impact on the performance. Even if it has a low linear transmittance, the lengths of these interfaces can add up to miles on a single project. Effectively, dealing with this transition is multifaceted, especially as you reach into construction, often including coordination with the facade design team, contractor, and multiple trades. This could be simplified through the use of a single facade installer or modular system, but this may not always be the most effective, whether through costs or constructability for your project. Where to focus next depends on the type of net zero building. In the case of residential, many will automatically be drawn to the balconies. These are more obvious than window to wall interfaces as they are typically a very prominent architectural feature. But if balcony lengths are limited, then it may be other types of details that have a greater impact. The only way to find out is to go through the calculation process and separate out the heat flows of all the different details. So how do we take this information and apply it to design? By going through the calculation process, we can evaluate exactly which detail has the biggest impact and the largest contribution to heat flow. This helps us establish where to focus. The amount of additional heat flow caused by a detail on a project will be a combination of the linear transmittance value and the total quantity of that detail. A large linear transmittance may not matter if it doesn't occur very frequently. That being said, if you aim for efficient details across the board, that's not a bad place to start. So what exactly makes an efficient detail? In standard construction, what we have typically used up until now would have large or moderate linear transmittances as seen here in these categories. As we increase performance, such as those set out in the BC Energy step code, lower linear transmittances for details will be expected into the mitigated and efficient range. With net zero ready construction, transmittances will likely need to be in the efficient and or thermal bridge free range. In aiming for the 30%, 70% split and the iterative process discussed earlier, let's take a look at an example scenario for a mid-rise multi-unit residential building that's targeting R20 for the overall envelope. At the start, we have about an R21 wall and a large amount of thermal bridging. This results in an overall R8.8 for the building. We refine and improve the performance of a few key details like the window to wall and balconies, this allows the performance to bump up to about R14.5. Well, where to now? We can look at the clear field and add up more insulation up to R30. This now provides an overall envelope performance of R18.5. So we're almost there. If we further refine a few other key details to be even more efficient, we get up to R20. What if we want a design that goes even farther? What about R30 effective? As we reach higher, the mitigation of thermal bridging becomes even more critical. 
From this chart, you can see in general how the average performance of details impacts how much performance we need from the Clearfield assemblies. If we need an R30 overall, then in our case, we would need to use at least an R40 wall system and an average linear transmittance of about 0.05. So that's somewhere between efficient and thermal bridge free. Even if we just used efficient details at about a 0.1 average, then we would actually need at least an R70 wall. And with just using mitigated details, as you can see, we would never reach that R30 effective. This shows you how to go through the design process and some tips and strategies to help narrow down the opaque envelope design to help meet net zero ready Teddy targets. Finally, let's go through a few quick points to help avoid common pitfalls with designing for building envelope performance and mitigating thermal bridging. If utilizing generic details from a pre-calculated source like the building envelope thermal bridging guide, don't worry about differences in material properties or minor assembly differences like the thickness of gypsum especially in early design. These won't have a very major impact. Similarly, don't worry about differences in boundary conditions if the values have been calculated according to different standards, such as Passive House. These also have minimal impact. Do not assume that details you've used in the past, such as window to wall interfaces and window placement, will necessarily work for net zero ready buildings. Make sure to understand the overall impact of a detail before you spend a lot of effort in refining or improving it. For instance, it may make more sense to minimize the window to wall interface first rather than jumping right to a balcony thermal break. And finally, don't forget that for exterior insulated assemblies that use cladding attachments, the thermal performance of these attachments is really dependent on the structural requirements and the spacing of these attachments. This is project dependent and should not be overlooked, especially when formulating our specifications. For more information about this topic, please see the full playbook on the ZebEx website. This presentation is part of the ZebEx Net Zero Energy Ready Playbook series.